Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve one of my least favorite coding questions, merge intervals, lead code number 56. So we're given an array of intervals where each interval is at i has a start point and an end point. So we need to merge all the overlapping intervals and return an array of all of those non-overlapping intervals that's going to cover all of the intervals in the input. If we have the intervals 1, 3, 2, 6, 8, 10, and 15, 18, then we can see 1, 3, and 2, 6, are overlapping. So that's actually going to get merged by the beginning, which would be one, and the end of those, which would be six. So these two are going to get merged into one six. And this new interval does not overlap with eight and 10 or 15 and 18, and eight and 10 does not overlap with 15 and 18. Therefore, the intervals that would cover the whole range are this output right here. Okay, and this example here is meant to really show you that equality counts as overlap. So if they are equal here, then yes, Yes, one and four and four and five are overlapping, that would turn into just one and five. Okay, let's work with this list of intervals. So what we do here is you'd probably draw this on like a timeline or an interval line. And our first interval would be at two, six. So I'll draw that here, two and six. And the second one would be one and three. Okay, so I'll draw that a little bigger here, one and three. We can see that clearly overlaps. We would have eight and 10 and seven and nine are also going to overlap. So we have seven and nine overlap as well. So what does it actually mean to overlap? Well, basically what it means here is if you see here one and three, this guy right here is really the issue. If we ended before the other one started, then that's not overlapping. As long as we end after that one starts, it's overlapping. So no matter kind of how far you put it over here, whether it's before or after this endpoint, as long as the first one is ending after this one starts, well, then it is considered overlap. Now this is very, very difficult to work with unless you sort the input, because right now we're dealing with two and six, and then you have one and three. It would be way easier if at least you went through the input and we know that the starting points are going to increase. So here you go, one, three, two, six, seven, nine, eight, ten. We'd still have the same intervals over here, but now we at least know that as we're kind of going through the array, the one that's on the left, which I'll call X, and the one on the right, which I'll call Y, we at least know that X is going to start before or equal to the same time that Y starts. We don't know about the endpoint but we know that x is going to start before y. So precisely, we know that x at zero, that just means the starting point of x, we know that the starting point of x is going to be before the starting point of y, assuming that y comes after in the input. Okay, so we know that x is going to start before y. Then the definition of overlap, which I'll just call OV for short here, overlap would be if you have that x at one is greater than or equal to y at zero zero. Okay, so we need to sort the array by the starting points, and that is the definition of overlap. Now that we know that, we can describe the algorithm that we're going to write. So what we're going to do is to create a new merged interval list, which I'll just call M, and at the beginning, it's going to be empty. So we're going to iterate through the array, and we'll call this interval, say, interval I. Is there any overlap between our current interval I and the most recent interval we've merged here? Well, no, we haven't merged any intervals here. So because of that, we are just going to put this in here. So there's no overlap so far. Let's just put interval I in here. Okay, let's look at the next interval, two and six. Is there overlap now between our current interval I and the last interval we just merged? Well, we have one and three. Okay, there is overlap because that condition holds. If you think about this as x because it definitely came in the input before our y here. So that means we need to merge this current interval i with this interval we just put into the list. We don't know which end is bigger, so 6 or 3, and so you really just take the maximum of those two things. So the maximum here would be 6, so we basically just change this interval here. We would change that to have the same starting point, but you need the bigger of the two endpoints, and so now we have merged those intervals, and we can keep going. So let's look at our our next interval i. This is going to be basically our y, and this will be our x still. And we can say, okay, is there any overlap here? Well, no. Our current interval x ends before y even starts, or i. And so we are just going to place that new interval that we have into our list of intervals. So now this is basically going to be our x that we're considering. So now we look at our y. Is there overlap with x? Yes. So we need to keep this same starting point that we have, but take the maximum of the two 
intervals, that is going to be 10. So we merge those with 10, and then we'd get to the end of the array, and we can see that we're kind of done here. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to sort the intervals by their starting point. So we do intervals.sort, that actually does it in place, intervals.sort with the key that takes a lambda function telling it how to sort. We're sorting an interval, and we're going to sort it by the interval's first component. So it'll sort the intervals by their starting points ascending. Okay, now we'll get a new list called merge, so an empty list, and we're going to build up that list. Then for each interval, in intervals, if we haven't merged any so far, so if we haven't merged any, or the merged at negative one at one is less than the interval at zero, I'll explain this all in a moment, we're going to merge dot append that current interval we're looking at. So basically, if you're looking at an interval, and you don't have anything to compare it to, well, we're just going to throw that interval in so that we have one. Otherwise, this will not go, but we'll be checking this condition. If we end before they start, that means that there is no overlap. So either of these two conditions means there's no overlap. And so we'd want to just append that and make it our new current interval. We're really only ever concerned with the last one that we put in there. Okay, otherwise, we're in the situation where we do have overlap. So that means we need to merge. So we're actually going to modify. So merged at negative one, that's going to change to the interval that starts at the same spot. So merged at negative one at zero. So we keep our starting point and the end point, that'll be the maximum of the one that we currently have. So negative one at one and the new end point, which will be the interval at one. After we do that, that's going to merge all of those intervals and we can just return our merged list. This is going to run in a big O of n log n time. So the worst thing we can do is to sort them. Then we just kind of loop through. So that's okay. And the space complexity, although our sort is in place, we are building up merged and creating new intervals based off of our original ones. So that will actually take O of n space. Okay, so if we were to run that, that is going to pass the test cases, and that is definitely the best solution possible. Drop a like if this was helpful, guys. I hope it was, and have a great day. Bye-bye.